guys want to talk a little bit about how being an avid has changed the way that you relate to your teachers, to your family? Anybody want to reflect on that? I believe Christopher wants to reflect on that. Well, like usually when I was in school, I used to you know talk to my teachers about schoolwork, but my my avid coordinator, I can call him and and you know come to him about anything. If I have a problem, I can call him. And sometimes I'll call him like 12 o'clock at night just to ask him a question. And then <laughs> he'll answer. He was like, Chris, you're supposed to be in bed. <laughs> so it, it kind of builds like a, a strong relationship. So you can pretty much tell them anything, and you know, they won't tell anyone. So it kind of builds that trust. Thank you. Kayla, you want to say something? Avid is no longer. <laughs> Talk about your teacher. What do you learn? My teacher, she. Yeah, she helps me because she says, okay, guys, we're finna do this, so you already know what to do, like two column notes or your two column notes with math or if we're doing reading. And when it comes to test, those notes right there is right there to answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we'll take Annabelle, then Maurice. Um, how it's helped me with my relationship with my teachers was um, last year I wasn't so good with my teachers because sometimes I didn't understand so I'm like I get all frustrated and then I don't understand what they're trying to ask me or tr what they're trying to teach me so then once like I come to my app now I have my avid teacher Miss Machine she's helped me bond with her and how to bond with other teachers because sometimes like all the of my periods there avid um, teachers so some teachers they're not um, I'm like Miss Machine they're not doing what they're supposed to do like what you're trying to teach me <laughs> so then I'm like oh, Miss Machine so can you talk to them about how to do it <laughs> and then she's like but you know what you should be doing, and you should be at maybe after or before school taking all the Cornell notes or trying to do this. But Miss Machine, <laughs> that's too much work. And then, so it helped me bond with her and bond with my other teachers. So that's how it helped me relate to my teachers. <laughs> Mr. Sapp, were you going to say something, sir? <laughs> uh, well, bonding with my avid teacher, she helped me set the tone for my high school career, as far as my 12th grade free, uh, career, for example. Like, you, I, I feel that I can go to her about anything and everything, if, and she's got my back. And plus, um, like other people that be going through things at home and stuff like that, you can depend on them to be there to support you. And for example, like Thursday, I had to talk to the freshman students at our school and some of them didn't even know what bonding was with their teachers. So when we explained it, they really got that in their in they head and um, really were like, like, okay, now I know what bonding is. Uh, let me try that. Because if you ain't got your teacher and, well, if you ain't got nobody behind your back, you always have your teacher. Thank you. <laughs> Nadege, go ahead, Nadege. Um, well, my avid teacher is Ms. Donnelly, and I would say that we have a really close relationship, and that has also helped me open up relationships with my other teachers as well. She's always there for me, whatever I need, and <laughs> she used to be my chair coach and everything, so she's always there for me, always helping me. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's important to have a relationship with the avid teacher because, like, they're always there for you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's okay. We do this a lot in AVID today, just in case you don't know. There's a lot of crying that goes on. Uh, I just, I don't, is anybody lined up for questions yet? Now, I want to just, we have 39 states here. And my friends from Minnesota, there's about 78 of you here. I will find you. I expect you to line up and ask a question. You know you have a question. When you do line up with your questions, folks, try to direct them by grade level if you can, if it works for you. So if you have a question for the elementary scholars, middle school, high school, or Crystal, that would be great, OK? So I don't see anybody lined up yet, but I will, I will find you. Uh, the next question is, um, 
and folks, this is another one we didn't rehearse, so I'm throwing you, you threw me a curb, now I'm throwing you one. Um, a stu if a student were considering AVID, doesn't know about AVID, thinking about joining AVID, how would you encourage that person to join? What would you say? What can they expect? Why, why should I join AVID? Well, we got some hands up on that one. Oh, DeKayla, go right ahead. Um, I would say to that student that if you want to join AVID, it, you can because in elementary, everyone's part of AVID. You can join AVID because it'll help you a lot. You'll get good grades like me, all A's. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, I saw some other hands. Oh, uh, Crystal. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I was in that situation uh, my ninth grade year. I was asked to join AVID with really no comprehension of what it was. So I kind of dove in feet first, not knowing what I was getting myself into. And joining the AVID program at our school, there was a lot of misconceptions as to the kind of people that were in the program. But now looking back on it, it was a fantastic experience with a lot of support and a lot of focus on how to get you from where you are to your future, where you want to go, accomplish your goals. So the support factor would be a big thing that I would emphasize, that they're always there and they're willing to do whatever possible to make you successful in life. Thank you. OK, we'll take one more. Annabelle, go right ahead. Um, how I will convince them to come to AVID is like I'll say, hey, you want to come to AVID? <laughs> so. Look, these are the facts. The, there, there's really nice teachers. You, you'll get to know what you want for your future and what goals you want to achieve. And these, these come up with these strategies to help you become a successful student. And they, they would like accompany you all the way through. Not all the way through, but <laughs> they'll, they'll just, um, like as if you were a baby, they help you through the s small steps and then you take the big leaps and then you take the bigger, bigger leaps. And so <laughs> then they, they would just guide you through the stuff that you need to know and then you go on off by yourself. <laughs> All right. Folks, we have someone in the back. We have a couple of folks with questions, and I, I see. I think I see that Minnesota might be represented back there. All right. Go right ahead. Uh, my name is Philip Metz. I'm from O'Galley High School in Melbourne, Florida, and my question is for the, the high school students. Uh, I want to know what it felt like for you walking into your first high-level, rigorous class in high school. Thank, thank you. Yeah, Christopher, and then Maurice. Go ahead. Well, when I first um, walked into AP U.S. History. No, it was AP US World History, and I was ready to quit. Like, <laughs> I walked in, and he was like yelling, and you know, the first you know week of school, you know, you get into the, the gist of like, you know, hey, this is my name, this is my number. No, we was taking notes the first day of school. I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, <clears throat> I was like, I want to get out of Avid. I was like, I hate this. And so my teacher was like, no, you're gonna tough it out and stick it out. And you know, after those three weeks, I actually liked it, and then, you know, I got used to it. Thank you, Christopher. Christopher, just before you join in, Maurice, Christopher, how many AP classes have you taken or are you currently taking? Just what's your total number of AP classes? Um, five. Oh, five. Yeah. Uh, Maurice, did you want to say something about rigorous courses? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I, uh, when I walked into my first AP class, I really already knew what to expect because I had visited my teacher before uh, going into the school year. So as soon as we walked in the, into the class, I already saw the whole board filled with a lot of information. And then how my teacher was, she very energetic and she very outspoken. So I'm like, this teacher is really serious. Like, you feel the guys work already? And we already had homework, like a writing assignment because I take AP Lit. So I was like, oh my God. A whole nother year. <laughs> Thank you. And, how, and you're taking how many? I take two AB courses and the rest honors. Thank you. Um, opposite from them, I was actually 
ready Sweet. for the AP classes. Lean in just a little okay. bit more. I was actually ready for the AP classes. I wasn't scared because, like, Avid is my backup. So I was, I knew if I had a problem, there's tutorials, and all of my classmates were all taking the same classes. So I know if I had a problem, hey, Desiree, Dragana, can you help me? I don't know what this lady's talking about and stuff. <laughs> so I wasn't scared. I knew that I had someone to help me out at the end of the day. Thank you very much, Nadir. <laughs> Crystal, I hope you'll forgive me. I know you have a response to this, but I want to take another question. I want to thank O'Galley High School, just recently validated as an AVID demo site, so congrats to them. <laughs> Let's move over here. Ben, do you, have a, do you guys have a mic over here? We'll take another question. Go ahead, ma'am. My name is Nikki Nash, and I teach at Oak Ridge High School in Orlando, Florida. Uh, my question is mostly directed to the three seniors in the center. If you could go back and tell your freshman self something, what would it be? <laughs> if I was to go back to my freshman year, I, I didn't join Avid. I didn't join Avid till my 10th grade year, in the, like in the middle of my 10th grade year. So if I was to go back to my freshman year, a lot of people told me about Avid, like the upperclassmen and stuff like that. So I think I consider joining Avid, and I do things that I didn't do to um, really have a relaxing 12th grade year, because I didn't take much Spanish classes and nothing like that. So I think I'll fall back and do all that thing, all them things if I had a chance to do it again. Thank you. Thank you. What, what would you say to yourself? <laughs> um, if I would go back to my ninth grade self, I would tell myself, Nadej, take Avid more seriously. Because going in ninth grade, I was in Avid, and I was just like, it's just a class. It's an elective. It looks good on my CAD applications. I'm just going to chill. So I wish I would have took it more seriously, and it would have helped me more. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think I would have slapped myself in the back of the head for that. <laughs> My freshman year, um, I just took all regular classes. I was like, you know, it's just high school. I'm, you know, I'm just going to take regular classes and get straight A's and just go to college. And it wasn't, you know, my mom, she was like, where's your homework? I'm like, you know, I did it at school. And she was like, no, homework is supposed to be done at home, not at school. That's schoolwork. So she called the school and she was like, uh-uh, he needs to take rigorous courses. So I was like, Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, you need to be challenged. So I was like, okay. So my, the AVID coordinator, they asked me to join AVID, and I joined it, and, you know, it has helped me a lot. Thank you. Thank you, That's, thank you Nikki. That's a great question. Back, back here. Good morning, students. My name is Ginger Bringle. I'm the AVID coordinator at Pinellas Park High School in Largo, Florida. Um, then my question's for Crystal. At UCF, have you been able to touch base with other former AVID students? Do you have a support group? Are you still meeting and having your own tutorials, that kind of thing? What's going on at the college level? I was actually the only one for my AVID program to go to UCF, so I was kind of the lone bird out. Everyone else went to um, the University of uh, South Florida, which was uh, in Tampa, and that's where a lot of the majority of the AVID students were accepted. So I came in kind of by myself. As far as the support system, because there was no one else there, I had to fall back on the skills I did learn in AVID and become independent. I, was, uh, I had to do my own organization. I was planning my own schedule. I had to find time to study myself. No one else was going to tell me when to do it. So that was a big adjustment because I didn't have the support system. But uh, I recently talked to a couple of the uh, AVID coordinators here, and I really plan on tutoring other students so I can help them and kind of mentor them, even though they're young, to what the big picture is and help them out through their journey. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next question, Dr. Mosier. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Gordon Mosier from the AVID Western Division. And my question for you, uh, those of you that will be going to college someday, and for Crystal, who is already in college, what skills, if you had to pick just a couple, what skills do you think will be most beneficial to you when you get into post-secondary education? What are you really going to take from AVID that's going to help you be successful? 
a little wait time here. I'm just looking at my old man. I, I, don't, I hate to put kids who've been an avid for four months on the spot. You guys think about that. We'll come back to you. Think about it. Somebody had their hand up over here. Uh, let's take Annabelle. What are you taking with you? The skills of organization. <laughs> because sometimes they're not going to bring up organization. So I'm going to have to bring myself organization. So I think it would help me because I'm going to have all these notes about the, about the subject or about the lesson. And then I'm going to have to find, where did I put those notes? So it would help me with organization. Thank you. Yeah, Maurice, go ahead. Um, a couple of uh, well, characteristics that I picked up is leadership. It helps you with leadership, organization, uh, time management, and also uh, the number one thing I believe it helps you with is really staying focused once you get to college. Thank you, sir. Christopher. Um, usually I'm doing things ahead of time, like staying organized. Like I have a job and you know I work like at least 24 hours a week and I go to school. And my friend's like, well Chris, when do you have time to do your homework? I'm like, you know, I do it ahead of time and I you know, stay organized so I don't have to wait till the last minute until everything pile up and you're sitting there trying to catch up. So that's a big factor, time management and doing things ahead of time. Thank you. I want to. I want to thank Dekayla and Giante for agreeing to respond to this. Dekayla, go right ahead. Um, I think I would take, I would keep on doing the notes because those really, really help. Okay, thank you, thank you, good job. <laughs> Aliber, you've got uh, Darlene Fry from uh, St. Paul. Go ahead, Darlene. Representing Minnesota. Uh, as a panel, or a few of you on the panel, I am Darlene Fry from St. Paul, Minnesota. And I wanted to know, what would you say, because sometimes we have family meetings and we want our families inside school and outside of school to be connected. What would you say to families are benefits to being in the AVID program? Say, Darlene, I think we need a repeat on that if you could. So what would, as a panelist, if you were to talk to families at, fam at a family or parent night to explain the benefits that you all have seen from being in AVID, what would you say to those families? If you got a group of families, parents, and others, that what are the benefits? Crystal, I'll start with you. Um, definitely information that you learn uh, through the AVID program is key. Uh, I wasn't really informed as to how to get from one level to the next when transitioning from high school to the university level, but my AVID teacher was really, really focused on informing us, knowing us, letting us know everything that had to be done in order to get to the next level. It wasn't just a graduating and voila, you're in college. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of essays that gotta be prepared. So definitely just the information because I had no idea as to what I was gonna do and it opened a range of possibilities for me when I was informed. I knew that I could do just about anything as long as I had the information and I could set my mind to it. So information sharing was a big thing in AVID. Thank you, thank you. More, somebody else, anybody? Christopher? <coughs> Um, every week, our teacher would print out like a PIV sheet, and he would send it home with us, and we had to get a sign, and it was for a grade. So our parents were like on top with like what our grades were looking like, and he would send um, a learning log, so we had to write everything what we learned, um, how we learned it, and you know like a summary. And we had the parents had to also sign it so they can know what we're learning each week, and they just don't know. Yeah, they're just going to school. So thank you, thank you. Last question. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry, Miguel. Last question. My name is Lane Rickert. I'm a district director in Georgia, in South Georgia. And I have a hypothetical question that I would like you to respond to. Let's just say that your school district in your area was considering some very difficult financial choices. And one of the things that they were considering discontinuing is the AVID program. And you and a group of students had the opportunity to go talk to your school board. What would you tell them? What would you say to them to help convince them to continue AVID? Well, that, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we know this could never happen, but it's a nice hypothetical question. Uh, Maurice, then Annabelle, thank you. Uh, by personal experience, uh, 
some of my homeboys that don't that had dropped out of school, they they wasn't uh, able to like be in the AVID program. But if they was to come to me today, I'd tell them to be in the AVID program because it can help you out in so many ways. So going to the school board, I piggyback on telling them that AVID kids need AVID and. If they don't have that support from other people or other programs, AVID can bring that support with the organization, keeping you focused in school, that support system. And um, I know a lot of kids at our school love AVID. The ones that's from rough neighborhoods, the ones that's from good neighborhoods, it doesn't matter. So I tell them, I really tell them that it'd be a big mistake to make to get rid of AVID. Thank you. Annabelle. Well, <laughs> why would you not want to have AVID in your school? I'd say, think of all the kids that will not pass the FGAT. <laughs> I'll, I'll also, I'll say this. Think of all the children. <laughs> that will have F's in their report card. And imagine your A or B school will turn into an F school. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Uh, she was such a character. You know, Justin, I haven't heard from you for a while, and I'm just picking on you. Do you want to add anything? Because you're going to be the last voice we're going to hear. You want to add anything? Yes. Um. <laughs> Go right ahead, sir. I have two things. I've been raising my hand the whole time. The second thing I'd like to say is, <laughs> okay, yeah, um, AVID is beneficial to everybody. Who, name one person in the world that has, well, besides the people who have done it, um, that have gone to college and done what they want to do without support from other people, without even getting even the littlest bit of guidance. One person that has gone, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and nobody can stop me, nobody can tell me what to do. Well, AVID, if the school board said they were going to take away AVID, I would cry because AVID is like, it's like a family of your own instead of the family that you're born into, a family that you have that is friends and teachers and people that you see every day in school and stuff. So where you're at most of the time when you're in, yeah, like a child in high school, college, elementary school, middle school, the people that you're with almost every day doing almost everything. That's like taking away um, food from people. Who wants to do that? 